Good morning and greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health and nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. That's 844-236-6010. If you or a loved one is dealing with a health challenge, if you want to wean yourself off your meds or help a loved one wean themselves off their meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. If you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, we love hearing those as well. And if you have questions about the longevity products or our Truth Skin Health products or anything we're speaking about here today, or any day on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please call the bright side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Make sure you ask about joining the bright side Ben team as well for a one-time $25 fee. You can start yourself a longevity business. You can make some money selling Longevity products or just get your products at the wholesale price if you so desire. Join the Longevity family. We have a culture of health. We have a culture of folks who want to help people with their health. We have a culture of people who want to help improve their lives and improve the lives of their loved ones and friends and family members. That's what Longevity is all about. If that sounds interesting to you, to you if you're entrepreneurially minded and want to start a business, Enjoy all the tax benefits associated with having your own business. Longevity might just be something you want to think about. Call 866-735-2470, and the phone team can give you the full scoop. Or you can head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com and sign up right off the websites. And, of course, you can purchase Longevity products off the websites as well. Brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. We've got blog posts, news stories, and all the Longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and critical healthnews.com. And then I want to remind you also to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, Truth Serum, Truth Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and our Truth Retinol 5% Gel made with just active and functional ingredients. 100% active and functional ingredients in our Truth Skin Health products. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, surfactant, water, oil, silicon, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in our Truth Treatment products. You can check them all out at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. Once again, we have been talking about plant nutrition, plant nutrients for a couple of months now. Specifically, we've been talking about what are called the polyphenols. We talked about lignans. We talked about the still beans, resveratrol being the most popular and well-known of the still beans. We talked about phenolic acid and the various fruits and vegetables that contain phenolic acid. Honey is a good source of phenolic acid. Green tea is a good source of phenolic acids. We're going to be talking about the flavonoids here in a little bit. I think the most important point 
Uh, at least one of the most important points about these phytonutrients and plant nutrients is the fact that aside from the vitamins and the minerals and the fatty acids and the amino acids, what we call the mighty 90 essential nutrients that make up plants and veg make up the nutritional components of plants and vegetables. Of course, plants and vegetables are also going to provide you with sugars, carbohydrates, and, and uh, protein as well. Yes, protein. You will get protein in your, in your fruits and vegetables, albeit not a lot of protein, but everything has protein in it. So you will get protein from your vegetables and fruits, fruits a lot less than vegetables. But aside from these nutrients, these macronutrients and micronutrients, the phytonutrients, the plant nutrients that we've been talking about, we've only really begun to appreciate those for the last maybe 20 or 25 or 30 years. Yes, we've known that plant materials are important. That's true. We've known that plants and vegetables and fruits and, are healthy and they comprise a key element of a good diet. We've known this for 100 years, probably more. But no one really knew about the constituents of plants and vegetables and why they're so important, aside from the mighty 90, until maybe the 1990s. I'm talking 25 or 30 years. This is largely because these phytonutrients, these flavonoids and polyphenols that we've been talking about now for a couple of months, are really in vegetation in tiny, tiny amounts. This is how potent these things are. Remember, these things are poisons. These, a lot of these things are plant poisons. They don't kill us because they're in the plants and vegetables in very, 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 very trace amounts. In fact, they're in there in such trace amounts that we didn't even know they were there. Specifically, we knew something was there, but we didn't know that these things specifically were there until, until our uh, detection technology was advanced enough to find them. High-tech detection devices like NMRs, nuclear magnetic resonance, and GLCs, gas liquid chromatography. These are super high-tech devices that can spot trace amounts of things. They were, they were around, these devices were around maybe in the 1940s and 1950s, but we didn't get around to using them for the world of nutrition, for botanicals, for plants and vegetables until maybe the 1980s or 1990s. And that's when we really started to appreciate the importance of these flavonoids and polyphenols that we've been talking about on the bright side, as well as the carotenes and, and steroid compounds that we'll be talking about in the future. In fact, I personally believe that if we knew these things were in plants and vegetables and fruits, if we knew about these phytonutrients back when vitamins were being discovered, uh, maybe the 1920s, 1930s, and 1940s, that's when all the real hardcore beginning work on vitamins and foods was done. Before the 1930s, by the way, we didn't know about vitamins. We knew there was stuff in food, but we didn't really know about the mighty 90 essential nutrients until 1920, 1930, 1940. That's when they really started to discover these things. And I personally believe that if our detection technology was advanced enough back then, we would consider the polyphenols to be part of the mighty 90 essential nutrients. They're not classified as essential, but technically speaking, I'm pretty sure we can consider them to be essential. And by essential, I mean you better have them or... Uh, you're going to suffer some kind of deficiency disease. We don't call them essential, but I personally believe they very well might be uh, of the same nature in terms of their essentiality as vitamins and minerals. But before we go off uh, too much in worshiping and deifying plants and plant molecules and botanicals, I think it's important to point out that it's not all, it's not all sugar and light. It's not all a, a botanical nutrition and botanical chemistry is not all a bed of roses. For one thing, phytonutrients are not well absorbed from the gut. That means you've got to make sure your digestive system is operating at peak efficiency if you are going to leverage the power and the importance and maybe the essentiality of these phytonutrients. You've got to make sure that your intestine is working correctly. You've got to make sure that your gallbladder is functioning well. You've got to make sure your pancreas is functioning well. These phytonutrients, for the most part, not all, but for the most part, are fatty. That means that if you're not digesting your fats, if you have a liver problem, an intestinal problem, dysbiosis, messed up gut bacteria, if you're not making enough enzymes, if you're not making enough hydrochloric acid, you want to really start to leverage digestive supplements and digestive health strategies for extracting these phytonutrients from their foods. What does that mean? That means use your digestive enzymes with your vegetables. That means use your uh, apple cider vinegar supplements with your enzymes, with your veggies. That means making sure that you're getting on your nightly essence when you're eating your salads. And you know what else? That means understanding how to leverage and take advantage and exploit the power of fat 
Well, I'll tell you what I mean when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. 844-236-6010 is our number. We will return right after this. Don't go away. Open for you at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, comments, success story, uh, anything we're speaking about here today, our Truth Skin Health products. If you've purchased our Truth Skin Health products and you have questions or comments, we love hearing those. Or success stories, we especially love hearing those. Eight, uh, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase our Truth Skin Health products, head over to truthtreatments.com. And if you want to purchase any of our longevity products, including our Beyond Tangy Tangerine and our Polyphenol Rich Ultimate Youth. We'll talk about that here in a second. That's a uh, green drink, actually more than green drink. It's a, a powdered polyphenol and plant nutrient uh, beverage, a uh, powder that you add to water, make your own beverage, make your own drink, make your own polyphenol drink. And you can do that every morning. Or you put it in your smoothie. You could sprinkle it in on your salads if you like. It's a good source of polyphenols and plant nutrients. You can find out all about the Ultimate Youth and the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and Ultimate EFAs and Fucoid Z and all the great longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And you can also call 866-735-2470 to order products or join the Brightside Ben team. Okay, so plant nutrients, there's a couple little things. I want to, we've got more to say about uh, about PCOS and about blood sugar and green tea and a lot more to say, but just a couple general ideas here when it comes to understanding how to leverage or exploit or take advantage of the power of these phytonutrients. You got to, number one, make sure that you're digesting and absorbing and, and utilizing these things, getting them, uh, uh, extracting them out of foods, extracting these polyphenols out of food. These plant nutrients tend to be locked up in vegetation. So just because you eat your vegetables doesn't mean you're getting the power of your vegetables. And this is where digestive health strategies become important. For one thing, chew your food. Chew it really well. Or mash it up or blend it up in a, in a, a Vitamix or a Nutribullet. That's another great strategy for helping the body extract and take advantage of these phytonutrients. That's why juicing is so helpful and so important. Make sure you're using probiotics. Make sure you're using digestive enzymes, the ultimate enzymes, and the ultimate nightly essence, and apple cider vinegar, pancreatic enzymes as well. And make sure you're understanding the power of fat. That is dietary fats, and yes, that includes oils. And I know I get all kinds of heat about oils, and I'll just, I've said it before, so I'll just, I don't want to rehash this, but uh, oils can be very important. And I know there's other nutritionists who don't think that you should have any oils. I don't believe that's necessarily the case. I believe you have to be very careful with oils because they are easily destabilized, especially by heat. You never want to heat an oil, and you want to make sure your oils are fresh, and you want to make sure your oils are unprocessed, unrefined, and you want to make sure your oils are kept in a dark place, and you want to make sure your oils are kept away from oxygen. And that is, you want to make sure you're taking care of the oils, but there's so many good things in oils. For one thing, there's polyphenols in oils. There's plant, the plant nutrients that we're talking about are found in oils. Oils are like a, a, a polyphenol supplement. And to avoid them it just doesn't seem to make sense to me to completely avoid them. Be careful with them, but avoid them. Uh, I'm sorry, be careful with them, but don't avoid them. But the second thing about oils is they will help your body utilize the fat-soluble plant nutrients in veggies. So when you mix your salad with a little bit of olive oil, or you mix your salad with a little bit of macadamia nut oil, or you mix your salad with some butter, or, or at least your veggies with butter, your body will be able to extract the fat-soluble nutrients much more effectively. And that doesn't mean just the phytonutrients, but it also means the vitamins and the minerals, especially if you braise them a little bit. And that's another thing you can do. You can heat just ever so slightly your veggies in butter or steam them in butter ever so slightly. Like the oils, heat will destabilize things in your veggies. In fact, the polyphenols can be broken down and, and, and uh, rendered inactive by too much heat. So just a little bit of heat is your friend 
when it comes to uh, helping break down and, and release these phytonutrients. And by the way, oils, you got to be careful with oils. I want to reinforce that. You got to be careful with them. The nutritionists, including Doc Wallach, who say stay away from oils, their point is very important. They're making a very important point, and it's not to be dismissed. Oils can be problematic. And the hum, you know, human beings are not meant to eat concentrated oils. We're supposed to get oils and foods, but not concentrated oils. So you're, you're, it's a razor's edge. I just think it's throwing out the baby with the bathwater to completely avoid them. You'll have to make your own decision on that, but that's just my opinion. What is true, however, definitively, is that using some butter or coconut oil or whatever kind of oil with, and by the way, butter and coconut oil are not in the same class as liquid oils. Butter and coconut oil are very stable. You don't have any of the problems with butter and coconut oil that you do with, with the other uh, liquid veggie oils. Uh, so uh, the human body is not supposed to be eating liquid veggie oils. These are a recent invention. We only really had liquid vegetable oils uh, maybe 100, 150 years, turn of the 20th century. So it hasn't been very long that we've had these things available to us. And, and uh, nutritionists who say to stay away from these things, are, their point is well taken. Any case, if you want to stay away from them but you still want the power of oils, use coconut oil and use butter. Those are really stable and really, really good oils and very tasty oils. And they'll help the body extract the phytonutrients from veggies, especially if you're braising, steaming, or blending your veggies up in a, a juicer or, uh, or a, a Vitamix or a Nutribullet. And when I say Vitamix or Nutribullet, I really mean a Vitamix or a Nutribullet, not just any juicer. The problem with most juicers is you lose the pulp, you lose the fiber. And that is some really good medicine. That is some really good nutrition. And it's a shame to lose it. That's why Vitamix or Nutribullet or Ninja can be so important because they keep the fiber. You get the benefits of the fiber. Another important point about these phytonutrients, especially when they come from fruits, especially berries, which are really loaded in, in uh, of polyphenols and phytonutrients. But a problem with berries and fruits is they're very high in sugar fructose particularly, and fructose is really especially problematic when it comes to sweets because fructose doesn't tell the body to stop eating sugar. Glucose has a shut, uh, stimulates a shutoff point. Fructose doesn't do that. In other words, you can keep eating fructose. You will keep eating fructose. That's one of the big issues with high fructose corn syrup is you'll keep eating fructose because the, the, the sugar shutoff switch, which is controlled by chemicals like insulin and leptin, L-E-P-T-I-N, the sugar shutoff switch is not hit by fructose. So fruit, fruit uh, sugars can be problematic. And this is where the ultimate youth and beyond tangy tangerine can come in so handy. With the ultimate youth from longevity and the beyond tangy tangerine from longevity, you get the power of the phytonutrients without the sugar. So you got to be careful with fruits. And I personally, you know, I'm not a big believer in eating a lot of fruit. And you can certainly get away without eating a lot of fruit. If you're going to eat fruit, stick to the berries and don't eat a lot of them. Veggies, on the other hand, you can eat a lot of those. The, the fruits you got to be careful with, particularly because of the whole issue with fructose. And then thirdly, cooking will destroy your polyphenols. But if you don't cook or heat your, your veggies or your fruits, the polyphenols, the phytonutrients, I'm using them synonymously, but they're not, the phytonutrients, we should say, they are locked up, they're tied up in the fiber and in other constituents of the fruits and the vegetables. So you need a little bit of heat, but not too much. And you gotta know where that point is. Just slightly softening your broccoli, for example, when you're steaming it. And you'll know that you've slightly softened it because it'll taste sweet. A little sugar is released when you, uh, when you steam your onions or garlic or your broccoli or your cauliflower. All right, take a break, and we'll come back with more good health information and you and your phone calls on the bright side right after this. Bully. Okay, we are back on the bright side. Thank you for joining us, friends. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific time and 10 to 11 Central, 24-7 on the archive pages at Ben Fuchs Archives. Dot com and brightsideben.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting up uh, benfuchsarchives.com, which is a compilation website that has all my websites, uh, six different websites on it. And you can also arc, uh, research or uh, review programs if you miss a program via the archive. They're all searchable. 
at benfuchsarchives.com and brightsideben.com. You can also purchase longevity products off brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And you can purchase our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, including our retinol 5% gel. If you've ever wanted to try retinol or if you've used retinol in the past or retinoic acid in the past and you ended up with irritated skin or burnt skin, you felt like you couldn't use retinol and you want to try it, I urge you to give our retinol 5% gel a chance. It's made with vitamin C and no preservatives and no fragrances and no fillers. So it's very, very gentle or it's relatively gentle. It'll still talk to you. Your skin will let you know you've used the retinol, but in a good way. You don't want to overuse our retinol 5% gel, just a tiny little bit. In fact, you don't want to overuse any of our Truth Skin Health products, just a tiny little bit. That's the hardest thing I got to tell people. That's the, that's the, the, the most complicated message that I got to tell folks because we're so used to just smearing stuff on our skin. My Truth Treatment products are treatments. They're not skincare products. I'm not in the skincare business, folks. I'm in the treatment business. It's a completely different way of taking care of your skin. The truth treatment products that uh, we have up at truthtreatments.com were developed by myself in my compounding pharmacy to deal with sensitive, broken, or somehow compromised skin, including accelerated aged skin, hyperpigmented skin, wrinkled skin. And what I discovered is you don't need the fillers. You don't need the wax. You don't need the emulsifier. You don't need the silicone. You don't need the oil. You don't need the water. What I discovered was 95 to 99% of most skincare products is junk. It's filler. It's waste. It's just there so somebody could sell you a product. And it's, it, it's maximized. The content of the filler is maximized for profit margin. In the pharmacy business, I was dealing with compromised skin. I couldn't play games. I was dealing with people who had some kind of broken out skin or burnt skin or traumatized skin or aged skin, and they wanted medicine. They wanted treatments. And that's how I, uh, that's how I came up with the true treatment system. Retinol 5% gel, true serum, truth omega-6 healing cream, and truth balm are all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. And uh, if you want to purchase our skin, our uh, longevity products, you can head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here in a minute. Tomorrow we'll continue talking about plant nutrition. Uh, I'll tell you about a fourth important point. The first three points I wanted to make about plant nutrients is you got to make sure you're digesting well to extract the plant nutrients. You got to watch out for sugar, and that's why it's important to use things like the Longevity Ultimate Youth and the Beyond Tangy Tangerine to really maximize the power of phytonutrients in your body. And thirdly, because cooking destroys these polyphenols, you got to be careful with how much you heat or cook your veggies, although a slight amount of steam and a slight amount of heat can be very important. There's a fourth important point I want to make, and this is really interesting about plant nutrition. We'll talk about that tomorrow as we continue talking phytonutrition on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. A couple interesting stories here. This is from The Conversation. Conversation is a really neat website. It's got a lot of good health information on it. The Conversation. Maintaining the same weight as you age may prevent diabetes. This is really interesting. You can tell you've got a blood sugar problem, regardless of what the doctor said. If you got a little belly where you didn't have one before, and that includes everybody. That means most of us. That means 99% of us are going to be dysglycemic as we get older, regardless of what the doctor said. This is a very important distinction when it comes to taking care of our bodies as we age. Dysglycemia versus diabetes. What is this distinction about? Dysglycemia is simply put messed up blood sugar. Dys meaning dysfunctional or messed up. Glycemia meaning blood sugar. Dysglycemia, messed up blood sugar. Diabetes is an official diagnosis that's given to you so you can get coded into the computer. So the doctor can give you a protocol. So your HMO knows what drugs you're supposed to take. So the insurance company knows how to bill you. It has nothing to do with your health. Dysglycemia can occur without a diagnosis of diabetes because the diagnosis of diabetes is arbitrary. It's made up. Yes, whole cloth, made up. Well, not whole cloth because they use statistics. Remember the three kinds of lies, lies, damn lies, and statistics. So they use statistics and reference ranges. Anybody ever wonder about these reference ranges, these mysterious reference ranges that are, while they're very mysterious, are so important in, in determining whether we're, we're pronounced as sick? 
or whether we get an official diagnosis. When you get your blood work done, this is how they do your diagnosis, they test your blood and they look at it and they compare it to this thing called a reference range. And they'll say you're high or low based on a reference range. But does anybody know what a reference range is? Don't you think that's important to know? Because we're gonna get dosed, we're gonna get poisoned, we're gonna get our organs removed, we're gonna get put into the computer, we're gonna get billed. Our insurance premiums are gonna be determined by how, uh, how we compare to reference values, how we compare to reference ranges. So that makes those reference ranges very important. Well, what are those reference ranges? There's some statistical mumbo jumbo based on a hundred or a thousand different people, small sampling of people that are supposedly representative, just to have certain, have, have uh, people of a certain age and people of a certain height. And I don't know how they do their statistical mumbo jumbo. And they come up with this thing called a reference range. And then they say you're high or low. And they, de they determine whether you're sick or not based on the reference range and whether you're high or low compared to it. You know, it has nothing to do with you. It has to do with statistics. You're not a statistic. People aren't statistics. Statistics only work for large numbers. Individuals are not statistically, uh, are not, can, uh, uh, can't be, the health of an individual can't be determined by statistics because statistics only work for large groups of people. So if you're not pronounced as a diabetic, that doesn't mean you're not dysglycemic. And you can tell you're dysglycemic by looking at your belly. If you got some belly fat, and I have it too, I'm dysglycemic also. So nobody's perfect here. And I'm not preaching to anybody either, because I've got it as well. You can tell you're dysglycemic by looking at your gut, by looking at your belly. Maintaining, this is, a, this is from the conversation, maintaining the same weight as you age may prevent diabetes. Yes, it will. Keep the same weight. Keep this, and even more important than keeping the same weight, keep the same uh, uh, percent, body fat percentage. It's really not weight, it's body fat percentage. Weight is just a simple way to do it, because it's harder to determine your body fat percentage. Either way, look at your gut. You want to keep your belly the same, uh, at, at, as, as large as it was when you were in high school. Then you'll know you're not dysglycemic. All right. Early COPD diagnosis could save billions. Do you know COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, is like the third or fourth leading cause of death? This is a serious problem. COP, and there's no drugs for COPD, and there's really no nu nutrients that will reverse COPD because COPD is typically caused by abuse, abuse of the lungs. Now, that abuse primarily comes from cigarette smoke, although air pollution has an effect as well. COPD is like a wounded lung. It's, wo it's a wounded pulmonary system. It's like a, a abrasion on the lungs. And when the lungs become abraded enough, you will not get oxygen into the blood. And that is a big, big problem. How do you deal with COPD? Well, number one, you quit smoking. Number two, you can do your breathing exercises. And number three, there's, there are nutritional supplements that while they, they will not, while they will not reverse COPD, can be very important for the lungs. Vitamin E, NAC, selenium, and vitamin C are of particular importance. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll come back with your phone calls right after this on the Bright Side. Don't go away. On the bright side, I am Pharmacist Ben, and uh, we'll get your calls here in just a sec. 844-236-6010 uh, is our number. So for COPD, a couple of things I just wanted to say. Uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Quit smoking and use selenium. Use vitamin C. Use uh, omega-3, uh, all your, ulti your ultimate EFAs, omega-3 fatty acids especially. Uh, magnesium can be important for the lungs. Likewise, N-acetylcysteine, NAC, which is so important for the lungs, it's actually used as lung medicine for uh, cystic fibrosis patients. Uh, and then a little bit of exercise can also help. COPD patients typically aren't going to want to exercise, but a little bit of exercise and practicing your deep breathing techniques can also be helpful. If you are smoking cigarettes, use vitamin C after every cigarette. Make sure you're getting enough vitamin E. Make sure you're getting enough uh, selenium, 400 international units of vitamin E, and maybe 600 or so micrograms of selenium. And by the way, vitamin E, vitamin C, and uh, selenium all work together. They're best taken together. And acetylcysteine, you want about 500 milligrams a day. And then magnesium, maybe 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams a day. But the best way, by far and away, uh, the best way to make sure you don't, have, don't get COPD is don't smoke. COPD being a uh, sign of abuse of the lungs, typically by cigarette smoke. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's uh, hit the phones and welcome Elaine to the bright side. Elaine from Alaska. Good morning, Elaine, my most loyal listener. What's up, Elaine? Hey, how are you doing? 
Good to talk to you. What's going on today? Yeah. Hey, I've got a, uh, a question, but I just want to thank you. You've helped me and so many of my clients so much because um, your great advice, I send that on to them so that way they have another nice. voice um, to thank make you. down decisions. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that, Elaine. What's going on today? Yeah, I've got a client. He um, had a uh, uh, ruin, uh, ruin X. I can't remember the name, but it's a gastric bypass technique. Okay. Uh, he had that operation, and eighty, let's see, eighty-four days. He has lost eighty-one pounds. Okay. Uh, which is pretty phenomenal, but um, he's a little concerned with muscle loss and the back pain that he had prior to the surgery hasn't gone away. So I'm working. It's a horrible procedure. I mean, yes, you'll lose weight, but it's a horrible, horrible procedure. You might as well just sew your mouth shut. You'll lose weight that way too. Uh, gastric bypasses when they just hack up your digestive system and reroute things. It's it's it, they shrink your stomach by cutting part of it off and sticking or separating part of it and sticking your intestine in the separated part. It's just a mess, an absolute mess. And I know you can lose weight with it. And once that happens, once you've had a gastric bypass, you're not going to be the same ever again. Yeah, you'll lose weight. Absolutely, you will lose weight. And the problem is we set the bar so low on health that we think we're better off with a gastric bypass. Uh, it's an awful procedure, and there's no way to mitigate the damage. Well, you can mitigate it maybe, but you can't really prevent the, the damage and the, the, the future damage associated with it, especially around nutritional deficiencies. It's absolutely imperative you're on a liquid nutritional program when, you're on, when you have had gastric bypass. The Beyond Tangy Tangerine is a must-have. Juicing is a must Anything you could do to liquefy your foods is a must. You will have compromised nutrient absorption, period. There's no way to get around it. And yes, you'll lose weight, and that's true. And if you have to lose weight, uh, you know, you, some people are 200. Uh, look, if you're 200 pounds overweight or 100 pounds overweight, there's a problem there. It's not a medical problem. It's a lifestyle problem. Nobody just gains 100 or 100, 150 or 200 pounds because there's something wrong with their biochemistry. It's a lifestyle issue. So I, I wish I could tell you there's some way to, to, to not have a problem after a gastric bypass, but you can't. What you can do perhaps is mitigate the damage, make sure you're using fermented foods, eating as little as possible, using dense, high, concentration, high concentrated liquid nutrients, make sure you're using bone soup, aloe vera gel, your Fucoid Z, and absolutely 100%, make sure you're getting your mighty 90 essential nutrients because you are at grave risk for nutritional deficiencies after gastric bypass, and nobody's going to check for that. I mean, I hope, I, I, I don't know what your question was, but I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, how about, like, um, I, I hear you talk about, like, digestive enzymes and electrolytes. All of that. All of that, lecithin, bile salts, digestive enzymes, uh, pancreatic enzymes, everything you can do to, you got to be very, very, very vigilant with your nutrition and supporting digestive health. Very vigilant. You should, if you have a gastric bypass, that should be a red flag alert for you to change your entire life and to become, a, to become way, 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 way more appreciative of the nutri uh, nutritional supplementation and, and a nutritionally dense uh, way of eating than ever before. If you've had it, you've had it, and so it's done. So that's water under the bridge. What that means is from that point forward, you have to change your life. If you do that, you can mitigate some of the damage, absolutely. The problem is, is when we do a gastric bypass, we live our lives as we did before. And, you know, that's not going to help because the same in, uh, biochemical environment, the same biological environment that caused the problem in the first place is going to persist. So you've got to change your life. But I don't recommend anybody has one. There's better ways to lose weight, way better ways to lose weight. Food addiction is a really serious problem, and that's largely behind why we end up so overweight. We don't appreciate food as a drug, and it is a drug. It has the same biochemical effects, albeit not as intense, as pharma pharmacology does. And the major reason why we eat, check this out. I, I'm running out of time here. This is the last thing I want to say, Elaine. I, I hope I don't cut I, I, If you have more questions, call back tomorrow. But, I don't mean to cut you off. Did you okay, have something I'll, else? Well, he was, he was given a patch, patch MD, and he's like, all my vitamins are in this patch I put on my skin. Nonsense. I'm like, dermal? Nonsense. Absolute yeah. nonsense. All your vit I mean, you may be able to get a little bit of nutrition through, uh, through, uh, through a, a patch, but you're not going to get all your nutrients through a patch. That's n absolute nonsense. Okay. That's just somebody selling them something, and they do sell it for bariatric surgery. I know about the patch MD. Stupidity. 
of the highest degree. No, I'm not. There's so many stupid things, but it's, pr it's pretty stupid. So uh, yeah, make everything I just said, make really very, pay very, very close attention to nutrient absorption and dense nutrition. Last thing I want to say, Elaine, I'm going to let you go here. And thanks so much for your call. Appreciate it. And thanks for listening, being a loyal listener. Appreciate that, Elaine. Last thing I want to say is this idea of food addiction. You know, we eat because we get peace of mind from eating because that's wired into us for eons. We didn't have enough calories. And so the body is wired to get to, to become content when calories enter into the system. So you'll notice as you're dipping your spoon into your Ben and Jerry's or Hagen dazs or whatever your ice cream is or whatever your favorite food is, your French fries or potato chips, we especially are driven for high calorie foods. You'll notice that when you're dipping in your spoon into the ice cream, just using that as an example, and you're raising the spoon to your mouth, all your problems go away. It's impossible to have a problem and have a spoon of ice cream coming into your mouth. Try it. If you have a fr favorite food, fr french fries or potato chips, you just dip, pull the, take the potato chip and raise it to your mouth and try to think something crappy while you're raising the potato chip to your mouth. It's impossible. It's impossible to have a lousy thought while food is being raised to your mouth. But the problem is, as soon as the food enters your mouth, your problems come back. And so, of course, we go back for the potato chips or the french fries or the high-calorie foods. It's impossible to eat a high-calorie food or actually to raise the, uh, to, to take the high-calorie food from the dish to your mouth and think a lousy thought. And that's why we become addicted to food, because of our lousy thoughts. But the problem is, there's a price to pay for the high calories. And that's the, the price we pay is our poor health. And in the way I look at it, that is 99% of the cause of our disastrous health care condition in this country and around the world. It's the way we are eating. It's misuse and it's abuse of food. We're eating because we got emotional and mental and, and psychological problems that disappear as the ice cream is being raised to our mouth. This is why, if you've ever seen anybody when they run out of, and, and you guys can relate to it, I can certainly relate to it, when you run out of your Ben and Jerry's, your haagen we will literally lick the, the ice cream off of the, uh, out of the tub. Some people will cut open the tub so they can get the last little molecule of ice cream out of there because their problems come back. Our problems come back when we run out of food. So learning how to take, how to, how to uh, reduce emotional and mental and psychological issues or work with those issues without food is the key to reducing a chronic long-term degenerative health crises. And then making sure, of course, you're getting on a nutritional, uh, nutritional program. Chronic disease is largely linked to abuse of food. Abuse of food is caused by a, a, a misguided attempt to reduce the impact of psychological, mental, and emotional issues. Learning how to reduce the impact of those issues without food is of major importance, especially if you've got 100 pounds or 200 pounds or a large amount of weight to lose. All right, I am just flat out running out of time here. I want to get to one more call if I can. Um, Oh, geez. I'm sorry, guys. I went on a rant today, and I apologize for that. I know I had a bunch of calls here. So call back tomorrow. Tell our call screener we left you on hold. We'll get to you, uh, uh, we'll get to you first up if we left you on hold, and I apologize to all our, uh, all our callers who are on hold today. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. Please check out all the longevity products at brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com, and our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. I'm not the one